All right. We need to, <coughs> excuse me, my ears are blocked up. I want to welcome you all here again tonight. We're going to look at Noah and how he stood in the gap. And um, as we go through this, we'll follow the same procedure as normal. We will look at the video and then go into discussion. And uh, let's just open in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us tonight. You said where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with you. And we just thank you that you are with us tonight. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that prompts us and opens a word to us and, and just prompts our heart when we see your word. And we just pray, Lord, that we will learn from this and apply what we've learned and that we can stand in the gap as well. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, do I love kids. Such energy, such creativity. I love to watch my kids when they play. You see, one of the greatest things in my life was becoming a dad. I remember holding my child for the very first time, amazed at God's grace. When you hold a baby in your hands, it always surprises me how small they are, how innocently they come into the world. Today, our society seems to have lost the innocence of a child. In the news headlines, every day, we see the violence and the destruction of a culture who has lost their innocence and who needs God. You see, our world has fallen, full of selfishness and perversion, but it's always been like that. Since the beginning of time, when sin entered the world, so did all the chaos. With the chaos comes gaps that need to be filled. In the Bible, a man named Noah was considered by God to be the only person on the entire planet who was blameless. Everything around him was perverted, self-centered, violent, and negative. A lot like today, when a society experienced moral failure, God looks for a man or a woman to stand in that gap. Someone who would have hope when everything seems hopeless. To have faith when the situation seems dark and dire. And to lead when almost no one will follow. God found Noah. Noah was standing in one of the biggest, most dangerous gaps in all of history. Noah shows us that it is possible Listen, it is possible to be godly in a godless generation. We face gaps every day, in our own lives, in our own families. And maybe it's a habitual sin that we can't seem to shake off. Or maybe it's a financial crisis, a doctor's diagnosis, or a career in shambles. Today your gap may be a marriage that has hit a rocky place. Maybe you have a child that has walked away from God. These problems, these gaps, seem to only get wider and wider as society continues to crumble. The gaps that a godless culture creates impacts individuals in the most intimate ways. And when left to our own devices, mankind creates a world of destruction. But when God intervenes and his people obey, he will create an ark of salvation. God is looking for Noah's today. He's looking for his people to be a vessel through which he can offer salvation. God used Noah because he was faithful. He was obedient. He was willing to stand, that's right, in the gap. And that's how God works. Every day, y'all, every day, God is looking for someone who says, I'm willing, Lord, send me, use me. And all we have to do is be willing and commit to be obedient, no matter the cost. In our story today, a woman named Chrissy and her husband Chris were called to be in the gap for just one little person. I'm so nervous, my hands are sweating. Her medical 
history just keeps running through my mind. I mean, they couldn't tell us anything. What if she's allergic to, to peanuts or her dog hair? We'll have to get rid of Rocky. He sheds so bad in the wintertime. We can give him to your sister. Okay. Sure, he has two dogs. I'm sure it's going to be fine. <laughs> but you put peanut butter on everything. Sandwiches, apples, pancakes. I have seen you put... Then I'll eat almond butter. <laughs> then I'll eat spam. <laughs> uh, listen, dog hair, almond butter, doesn't matter. We're gonna adapt, right? God knows. Yeah. We've been praying for this. He knows. <sighs> That's what we should start saying. We're adopting and we're adapting. They should, uh, they should put that on, on a post right here. <laughs> what a day, huh? I bet you guys are excited. <laughs> yeah, Gabriella's caseworker should be here with her any minute. I know you're probably nervous. Uh, a little bit. Well, it's been a long journey to get here, huh? Whew, we never thought it would uh, be like this, but, but God knew. <clears throat> Six years ago, next month, when we found out that... Wow. Well, I'm happy for you both. Do you have any big questions before we cover this last little bit here? Uh, just one. It's... it's a big one. Our... our last name is, uh... she gonna have our last name? After finalization, she will. Unless you decide otherwise. Well, uh, is she okay with that? I mean, it, it is her name. <coughs> it's pretty standard, but it's totally up to you. It's just a check mark on these forms. You know, you don't have to decide today, regardless of her last name. You're still going to be her parents, and she will be in your family. I think we're going to let her decide when she's ready. They mocked him. They criticized him. 
And they're even trying to stop him. Maybe God's calling you or your family to do something. And now you have to face the storm. And maybe it's a storm of criticism. Will you continue to be all in? Even if it costs you your reputation? It did for Noah. But that didn't deter him or his family from building the ark. Listen, God is far more concerned about our character than our reputation. When you stand in the gap, my friends, there will be moments when others may question or criticize you for your faith. And that's okay. You're in good company. And here's why. Hebrews 11 outlines the heroes of the Bible that stepped out in faith. People like Abraham, Noah, Moses, Rahab, and Gideon. All of the giants of faith took small steps of obedience towards God's destiny for their life. Now that's what faith is. A step toward what God is calling you to do in the midst of uncertainty. When you do, God will show up. For Noah, when he took a step of faith, he decided to build the ark. God gave him the details he needed to save his family. Even down to the where to put the window. Uh, that's amazing. God wants you to succeed in whatever he authorizes or commands you to do. He'll give you the tools and the ability to do it. Ask him and watch for his answer to unfold. When you stand strong like Noah and his family did, when you stand in the gap, God rewards your faithfulness. It may not come easy. You may go through some storms or even a flood, but you'll have a boat to carry you through the waves. I wonder if we'll ever make the wall. These families look so happy. Stop. You're a good mom. She hates me. She doesn't listen. <clears throat> and she feeds the dog from the table. So, how's the past year been? You're not my mom, you're not my dad. I don't want to live here anymore. I hate this house, I hate this family. I hate you! I thought we'd be the exception. Don't lie to me. Get a good kid. I told you not to do that. It'd be easy. You know my real dad. I hate this house. I hate these toys. I'm yelling at her. She's yelling at me. Gabriella. I hate these posters. Open this door right now, young lady. Shut up. Don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> I said I loved you the other night. Good night. I love you. I love you, Gabby. Maybe we made a mistake. Maybe we're never supposed to be parents. <laughs> why you two chose to adopt. We can't have kids of our own. But, but we want a family. Tell me what you love about Gabby. Well, she's, uh, she's creative like Chrissy. I think that this one is my favorite. I think that you are my favorite. Can I tell him this? Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she is competitive. Like him. Take your Nice. Nice job. She likes peanut butter. Rocky. <laughs> Sometimes that's a bad thing. <laughs> I used to say. We're adopting and we're adapting. But sometimes I wonder if we're any good at this at all. I don't love you. I know we'd be a mom. <laughs> Do you mind if we talk to Gabby together?
so your mom and dad say that you're very creative. Do you like your mom and dad? I hear you have a new dog. What's his name? Rocky Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Why did you give the dog your last name? I adopted him. <laughs> hey, can I tell you what's funny? Most people think that Noah heard from God on Monday. Build an ark by Friday. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like that movie, no one. Uh huh. Rock monsters. But that's not yeah. how it happened. The Bible says that it took Noah 120 years to build the ark. That's right, 120 years of a building project. Now that's a long time, my friends. It's hard to imagine doing anything for 120 years. I mean, I can't even commit to going to the gym for a straight month, let alone build a boat in one year. Sometimes I think we expect God to instantaneously give us what he has promised. When the truth is, he's looking for us to be faithful yeah. to the word he has given us. Can you imagine how slow the progress seemed to be for Noah at that time? Even in our story, just like Chris and Chrissy, sometimes God's promise takes time to be fulfilled. I mean, they were faithful. So was Noah. Both of these stories show us but it doesn't take a village to make a difference. Noah and his family, just eight people, were faithful to God. Obedience and faithfulness are what God is looking for in our lives today. You see, anytime God calls a person to move in a gap, a big dose of trust and an equal dose of patience will be required. You can count on it. Trust and patience. <coughs> Our necessities for a faithful filled life trust and patience are the ingredients God uses to develop us spiritual maturity sometimes that patient is with other people Noah had enemies of ridicule and skepticism in our story Gabby was skeptical of her new parents love but that didn't stop Chris and Chrissy from loving her and the critics didn't stop Noah from building the ark there will always be something trying to stop your promise. But that shouldn't stop you. When we trust in God, He will give us the grace to endure. Now here's the key. You must stay on the mission and not be moved by your feelings. Noah's assignment took 120 years to complete. I'm sure, my friends, there were times where he didn't feel like, like waking up. Didn't feel like building. I'm sure there were times when the critics got under his skin, but that didn't stop him. He didn't let the time or the critics get his mood down. He was driven to fill in the gap, not driven by feelings. And just like the couples in our story held on to the promise of adopting a child, they didn't give up when it got hard. I don't know if you know this, but life is hard, my friends. And if doing God's will was easy, Everybody would do it. Even Jesus said, Wide is the path to destruction. Narrow is the path that leads to life. Noah stayed on that path, that narrow path. The path that was hard to navigate at times. But in the end, he and his family found life. Noah stood in the gap for all mankind. <laughs> Hello, Thompson. How are you? Doing, Doing good. good. I just uh, placed another child last night, so I'm tired. It's been a whirlwind. Oh, that's great. I bet yes. the family is just thrilled. Well, they were nervous and excited. Something I'm sure you would know nothing about. <laughs> nope. Well, this is it. Are you ready? Definitely. A lot can change in a year. Okay, make a wish. Blow it out. Oh, but we just keep trying. 
adapting and looking for ways to make her feel special. <laughs> Is everything okay in there? Yeah, just doing girl stuff. Okay, pick a color. I don't know what color are you doing. Just depends on my outfit. I want to do the color that you're doing because you always look pretty. Pink. Let's do pink. I love it. Oh. It finally happened. Mom, Dad! Mom, Dad! What is it? What's the matter? I just wanted to say goodnight. <laughs> so okay. You scared me. Alright, good night. I love you. Where's the big hug? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here it comes. Yeah. I love you too, sweetheart. That is so sweet. Can I just sign right here under mom and dad's name? Yep. And your last name? Our last name. Good name for a dog. Noah's faith took sacrifice and hard work. Not just the work of faith, but the work of his hand. Just like in our story, it took Chris and Chrissy diligent work to earn the trust of Gabriella. In our lives, our mission often takes hard work too, both by faith and by action. That means we have to get our hands dirty, put in the time, put in the sweat, put in the work. A lot of people think Noah's story ended after the flood. Mm -hmm. But that was just the beginning, my friends. Yeah. Nothing about life after the great flood was any easier mm -hmm. than building the ark. The work may have been different, but it was vital <laughs> for survival. God prepared them for isolation and the work. In the time it took to build the ark, we can see that in every aspect of Noah's life, obedience to God was important. An all-in commitment was required. Noah reminds us that standing in the gap is costly. It requires sacrifice of our time, our energy, yes. and our hearts. We can expect opposition, ridicule, and mocking from others. Sometimes those we think support us won't. Noah had no idea how much he had to sacrifice when he said yes to God. It didn't matter. He was all in, my friends. Being all in means we continue to stand, continue to persevere, continue to have faith and trust God every step of the way. When it's easy and when it's hard, when things seem to be going good, and even if you feel like you're heading in the wrong direction, no matter the circumstances or crisis, continue to be all in. For Noah, it was a lifelong commitment. And that's what it takes most of the time, a lifelong commitment. God often requires that we stay in the gap for as long as it takes. Not when situations get tough, not when other people tell us to get out, but to stay in the gap for as long as it takes. When we hear God's clear call to obey, we must trust that His provision, His timing are correct. Then, with full hearts and clear minds, we build we serve, we give, and we care for whoever and wherever He calls us. The future God has for you, my friend, 
It's going to be the biggest adventure of your life. When you're faithful, in obedient to what God calls you to do, God is with you. And there's no place you'd rather be. When a society experiences moral failure, God looks for a man, a woman, to stand in the gap. Someone who will have hope when everything else seems hopeless. To have faith when the situation seems dark and dire. And to lead when almost no one wants to follow. God found Noah. And he's looking for people like you and me to stand in the gap for our generation. When I talk about patience, I think about a prayer I prayed, oh, some 40 odd years ago or more. I asked the Lord, I says, ah, oh, at some time in my life, would you please give me a baby blue convertible bug? I love those. Well, 40 years later, we it, well, he wakes me up. From a nice sound sleep, sleep to tell me to get up. I gotta go to the VW dealer today. I go, huh? What? And I go fall back to sleep and I go, Colonel doesn't have to be at the bank till such and such time. I'll deal with that. Okay. Who wakes me up again? Tells me the same thing. And I go, okay, okay, okay. And I fall back to sleep. And he wakes me up again to tell me the same thing. Get to the VW dealer today. Yeah. And I'm going, I can't afford a car. How am I supposed to do this? And uh, so I go, okay, let me take care of uh, Colonel's stuff for the VA at the bank and we'll go to the VW dealer after that. Well, I walk in. We. I said, yeah, we were together and we go, we want a baby blue convertible bug. I don't want it to have a black top that's too hot out here in the desert. And I don't want black interior. And I don't like that color blue that's over there. I want a different color blue. And it's got to have, uh, I want OnStar and Cirrus Radio and power steering, and I'm naming all these things, right? Uh-huh. And I'm going, and the guy's going, come on, He's going, come, come on, on. Come, come on, on. Come, come on. on. They had one, one. Oh. and it's in the far back corner of the lot. And he goes, is this the one you're looking for? And I go, I touch him like it shocked me. So I knew it was the one. That's, and the paperwork went like that, and I go, I don't know how to make the payments, but the Lord knew. Uh -huh. But patience. It took 40 years for me to get my baby blue convertible book. <laughs> I got it. It's in my garage. <laughs> I've been, people have asked me to sell it many times, and I go, no. nope. It's a gift from God. Yep. <laughs> it takes 40 years you waited for that car Noah waited 120 years for it to rain yeah. you think of that yeah um, one thing that got me now as I was thinking about Noah he was righteous in God's eyes you said um, last week when you spoke about it to us, um, unless you know it's God's will, don't do it. Noah was right with God and knew it was God's will. That's it. Otherwise, don't do it. Mm -hmm. If Brenda and I didn't know it was God's will to come to America, it would have been a disaster, moving our whole family across. Yeah. Um, the most important thing is God will use you in the gap but you have to be right with God and you have to 
um, be walking in his world and seeking his will. As I, I've shared before that in my devotion I say the Lord's Prayer the first time. And the part that's really strong for me is, your kingdom come, your will be done. Mm -hmm. And I think about that. Your kingdom come as it is in heaven, right? Yeah. So as a church, we are, are, are establishing his kingdom here yeah, in people that are getting saved and, and that's his kingdom. But we have to be open to his will to, to build the kingdom. It's, it's a whole relationship and letting him talk. If Noah had not, uh, not Noah, yeah, Noah, sorry, if he had not been right with God, um, there's no way that um, God could have used him as, as, as that. Yeah. And 120 years, okay, he lived for a long time, but we, you know, sometimes we wait a year and it's too long. We, 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 especially now, we live in an instant society where everything's mm -hmm. got to be immediate. Um, we go and buy a car. I, I couldn't believe it when I bought my first car in America that you could get it the same day. Everything done and you, you go in and you, you drive out with it. South Africa takes a couple of days to get everything cleared and then you collect your car. And it's an instant society, we expect the instant. And we sometimes expect God to, to, to instantly answer our prayers. But we have to trust Him and we have to believe in Him. Do you think Noah doubted at all in that 120 years? No. I think he did. I think he would have had to. Yeah. He was he good. Morning, every morning when you wake up, I mean, 120 years. Mm -hmm. And so every morning you get up and you look. Mm -hmm. God's blood look yeah. like this morning. Mm -hmm. I mean... He had to have some doubt along the way. Oh, yeah. How am I going to get the 50-ton timbers cut down to uh, a reasonable size that I can work with them? I've only got four or five elephants. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's got a crew or a loaves behind him. But... <coughs> was, was it gopher wood that they used? Well, yeah, they yeah. got to know your trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years listening to all the criticism. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brenda? Yeah. Brenda and I have been to the Ark in Kentucky. They've got a, a replica of Noah's Ark there. It's a big thing. Mm -hmm. It's a double story. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and we, my son and his four children, his wife came to visit us there and we went to the... Mm -hmm. My one granddaughter said, best day ever. <laughs> but to see what they built and see how yeah. big it is, mm -hmm. I can understand 120 years. Mm -hmm. You couldn't just get people into work. I mean, it was him and his sons that were building that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no chainsaws uh, or power equipment. No, none of that. <laughs> okay. Yes. But I, I was, as everyone was talking, I was, th I was thinking about the grace that was on Noah. Um, mm. <clears throat> if God has said something uh, five minutes ago, or five days ago, or five years ago, the Bible said, though it take a long time, that th I think that's Habakkuk 2 and 2, though it take a long time, and, he, and that 120 years is a long time, yeah. long enough that we probably would have walked off, okay, God, ain't going to do it or whatever, but um, nor had the wherewithal, you know, he might have had doubt along the way, and people laughing at him and scoring him, oh, you've been building so long, I, I'm, so, I'm sure there was critics around him laughing, look yes. at the boat, and all that. But when God had said something, and I believe that because uh, Noah was upright and he followed God, God gave him the grace to, to sustain the criticism. And yeah. it, it hadn't rained yet, you know, he, they yeah. probably... And the strength. Yeah. The mm -hmm. strength of, of, in yes. his heart. Yeah. Yes. yes, and like us today, you know, we, we tell people that Jesus is coming. Oh, you said that five years ago. He's coming, he's coming. We get laughed at, or we speak the word, we get laughed at and score, you know. Yeah. But I believe that if we persist, like those people in this movie, mm -hmm. they could have gave up and they could have said, oh, this, this ain't working out. This, this baby don't love us and we tried. Uh, but they persist. And I, I think that if we persist, of course, we're not building a boat. We're building families. We're building relationships. We're building whatever God put, put in, in front of us. Kingdom. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's opposition. 
Sometimes people laugh at us. And, Ooh, they think they're weird and all of that. But it's something about being persistent. Yes. Uh, I, I told God he was stuck with me too late. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I'm going to serve God the rest of my life. I, I make mistakes. I don't try to practice them. But you know what I'm saying. So I believe uh, in, in this. He was persistent. Those people in this movie, I got tears when the little girl said, she gave the dog her last name because mm -hmm. she wants to she adopt adopted him. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because they said at the beginning they would let her make the choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she never, when she had her still her last name, she didn't feel like she was fully adopted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm done, but I, I believe it's persistence. Noah yeah. could have quit. You know, he could have like, because he's human. He could have walked off. Wait, the rain hasn't came in. 120 years, but when God has said something to each of us, whether we're going to be healed, whether we're going to be triumphant, whether all of that, if we got to make sure God said it, because yes. he didn't just go and decide to build a boat for, for, for sport, you know, he wasn't doing it for fun. God spoke to him and told him what was going to happen and all of this. God so, gave him that, told him what materials to use. What every little dimension was, yeah. what kind of wood, wood. what yeah. kind of pitch. And if you look in the Bible, it puts, it lays it all out completely. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yes. And I, I think with that, he, he, he gave a mimic structure, I'm sorry, to sustain, <laughs> um, um, sustain the weather. Because it was going to be a long time. There was going to be floating in water. So you had to have the right wood. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm sorry. Carry on. I, I would, you know, you just said something that I, I'm going to comment on. Okay. And that is, uh, Noah's going to build an ark. Nobody's ever built a boat before. I know. Huh? That's they right. They had no idea. They didn't know what it is. Or what well, the... Noah also, God told Noah, guess what? Mm -hmm. This thing's going to float. Yeah. And when Noah would tell the other people, this is going to float. Mm -hmm. We're going to be on top of the water. Float? What's float? Yeah, 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 what's float? Yeah. So yeah. It, it's quite amazing. It is. That might have been the first time ever that a carpenter had to bend the yes. timber to shape yeah. it, right? Yeah. Up to then they might have just built squares or, you know, whatever they needed. And what about the animals? They didn't need boats. He had to take two of each animal in the world into the... That, that's a mystery. That, that is a mystery. Well, okay, that's... You know the Lord called these two. Yeah. He can, because otherwise you wouldn't... You can imagine him out there trying to wrangle them? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> and you know, if you think how many animals there are across the world... There's so many. And how many... Have Gone extinct already, and those there's so. That's true. All of it is a mystery. It, it's massive. Mm -hmm. And then they had to have food for all those animals. Sure did. Forget about the food. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Although I think they said that they might have been in hibernation yeah. during that period. I don't know what you've heard on that, but. Yeah. I heard somebody say it's possible that the animals were in hibernation. Yes. Well, if the Lord was able to. Call them and get them to go on to the boat. That's amazing in itself. Yep. So when uh, why couldn't I'm, he get them to rest? I, he could. I mean, I agree with rest, that, what you rest. say. Yeah, I can't see Noah going up to a bunch of cows and and the cattle and saying. Okay, one cow, one bull, you've got to go and climb on the ark, you know, uh -huh. and go to all these animals. God was the one that led them on. That's true. And yeah. made them move forward. Yeah, that's a mystery. Why did you all of a sudden start to go? They went right in, they were just marching right in. That's... Sorry, I'm just trying to find my... Well, there's a thought that stood out. A sentence that the gentleman said, mm -hmm. and it's stay in the gap for as long as it takes. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of beg to differ. I don't know if the gap ever ends. It doesn't. It's mm -hmm. perpetual. Mm -hmm. Where it's kind of like a saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, there's there's some very 
big, there's a lot of, there might be a lot of teeth missing out of this saw here yeah. and there. Mm -hmm. so, and those are the gaps that these so let's people take, are filling. Let's take the adoption of the children, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. um, Chris and Michelle adopted kids. They're responsible for those kids until they of age that they can work and, and look after themselves and make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. But remember, Chris shared that his wife said, Michelle, uh, somebody asked her, said, when will you stop, you know, taking kids in? It's when other people do. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a gap will last until somebody else fills it. Uh-huh. Okay. So it doesn't... Is this a gap? It doesn't necessarily mean... I that have a son. A you know, they say that, well, what, how many parents, when their kids get 18, get out of the house? Yeah. I've had that. Yeah. And I've seen what's happened to these kids. I know. And uh, because they weren't ready to leave. And uh, this is my son. He's in his 50s. Okay. 18. He was at 22. He went into the Navy. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it doesn't. Always it's like kids. that gap. You can put like kids are part of a gap. Yeah. And they say, well, be ready to, you know, 18 years. No. It's their life. No, I agree. It's their whole and, life. And at South Africa, we, our kids, we were used to, they used to live at home until they got married and then move out. Mm -hmm. um, probably because of the financial reasons it was cheaper to stay at home. But we were quite surprised coming here to America and seeing <laughs> kids <laughs> up at 18, you know, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Brenda, you wanted to say mm -hmm. something? Also about the kids, because... Um, that, that is definitely whatever situation you're in, whether they're your own or adopted or any any situation, that child is is yours, mm -hmm. and you and yes, you maybe at some time sometimes a responsibility is more than others, so maybe you feel like you're standing in the, in the gap until your child gets saved. So they get saved, but that's not the end of it. Mm -hmm. You don't step back and say, okay, you're a no now that you're great. I don't, you don't need me. You still mm -hmm. love I feel support. like my kids are in their 40s. And there's times when it's just on my heart that they need mm -hmm. me more than ever mm -hmm. at certain things and certain things mm -hmm. they got. Correct. And I never sure. stop loving Correct. them. And I pray that God will always help me mm -hmm. to be sensitive to when they need me to be there in that gap. And prayer is standing in the gap for whatever that anybody's going through, mm -hmm. but for your children more than ever. Mm -hmm. Prayer it, is standing in the gap for them. The Bible mm -hmm. it speaks about making disciples. And I, I'm going to just use this as an example now. Mm -hmm. When we fill a gap, it's not just our responsibility to fill that gap, but it's to find a, an apprentice, if you want to say it like that, mm -hmm. somebody to bring alongside and train him in what you're doing mm -hmm. that he can take over. Because mm -hmm. we don't live forever. We don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't build for 120 years. Tim, would you like to do woodwork for 120 years? Or? Oh. <laughs> um, Maybe. So the gap, the gap can be different, but I hear what Brenda says, you love your kids no matter what, yep. until the day you die, they're your children, you love them and you, mm -hmm. you support them. Some kids, um, if they're special needs kids, mm -hmm. you, you can't just say that you're 18 now, you're on your own, there's a responsibility you mm -hmm. have to do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not going to go into all of that, what I'm trying to say is, we have to be ready. We have to be in such a relationship with God day by day and every day committed to the Lord. And I know that even just in my Christian walk, I have to daily come to God, ask Him to forgive my sins, ask Him to help me for the next day and pray about my family, pray about all the needs we have. Excuse the thoughts in my head, Lord. If, yeah. <laughs> if we, might not come out the mouth, but sometimes... If we don't thoughts. do that... Um, can you imagine Noah, I, I would have had that 120 years, I'm sure daily he was talking to God about it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because he had a relationship with God. How did God know he was upright? He had a relationship with God. 
And I believe he asked for, there was times that he said, am I doing the right thing? Am I going in the right direction? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. I believe all of us have uh, a built-in, it's, it's in our innate, um, the Bible said that whatever we need is already vested in us. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the task, it, it might not be building a boat, it might be building a family, building a group, building a whatever. There's something in us that God has vested in us to, you talked about make, make the long journey. Because we talk about our children. We got to still love them unconditionally. When, they, when they're not acting right, we still love them. That's something in us that's attached to them that we, 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 we just, you know, be, we are persistent. I mean, we persist. And I think that's with God. Uh, like this family, they, they could have gave up and said, oh, my God. They did say, we, we must have made a mistake. And so in this, what I'm getting is that God wants us to persist no matter what. And there's something in us that will help us do the job, whether it's children, whether it's whatever. You can put both, you can put whatever. There's a grace in all of us that can do it. But sometimes we get distracted by the lies of the enemy, by yes. criticisms, by looks, by all of that. We get distracted. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. So, now, there's two things that I want to say. Yeah, first of all, the book of Revelations in mm -hmm. a number of places says he who endures to the end will be saved. That's uh -huh. right. Life is a race. And you can run a marathon and stop 50 foot from the start line mm -hmm. and, not, and it means nothing to anybody. That's right. They don't even see that you ran the marathon. They don't look at how fast you ran that up to there That's and how so well you true. did. It's only if you complete the race. Uh, we have to complete what God has called us to do mm -hmm. and faithful is he that has called you he, that will equip us yes. to, to fulfill what he's called us to do. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's persistence as you said earlier. Yeah, yeah I feel like it, the gap and waiting and being persistent, they all go together and the thing that's been really, really very much impressed on my life lately is that God is with us in the waiting. Yes. yes. Like He doesn't leave us. Mm -mm. He doesn't say, okay, that's the end and I'll meet you there. No. 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 He, and we, he walks with us and He will walk with us every step of the way. And yes. if, he wants us, if we want Him to hold our hand, He will do that. Mm -hmm. He is with us every moment of every problem. It's like the Bible said, He will, you go, you will go with us through, mm -hmm. through the fire and through the water. Yes. So, I heard on the radio this week a guy was preaching mm -hmm. and he said we sometimes think some things are too small to take to God. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't bother God with it because mm -hmm. he's the God of the universe and got such big things and his war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. and, but think of the Bible with the prophet where that guy lost his axe head mm -hmm. wow. and how he got it to... God led him to get it to float to the surface so he could find his axe head. Mm -hmm. If that axe head was so important to that guy that God restored it to mm -hmm. him, there's nothing that in our lives that's mm -hmm. too small. Yeah. To take the well, I, got, I got one for you. I was out back and I gotta fix my lawnmower. I can't afford to buy a new one. I gotta <sighs> fix this one. And it's old and I'm taking off the carburetor and I put the little spring on there so I can get the gas tank off and I'm doing all this stuff. And without, it never even crossed my mind that I flipped my lawnmower over to get to the bottom part and... Lost some parts. And uh, where's the spring now? I just flipped the lawnmower over in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I go, Lord, I go, Lord, I asked you to help me with this because I didn't know what I was doing. And I put the lawnmower back and I just started putting all the pieces back together. And when I went, that it was time for that spring, where I had put it, 
I reached there, and there it was. So even, yes. it's, he says, all things. Yes. All things. That means the little spring on the lawnmower, yeah. uh -huh. if you don't know how to lay carpet or something, I've been on my knees with a bundle of carpet in my arms, praying, because I'd never laid it before, and I needed to. Yeah, yeah it All turns things. out. That's... Yeah. And so unfortunately, we try on our own first and then go to God, right? Mm -hmm. No. No? No. <laughs> I, I knew better. <laughs> Good. I couldn't afford another piece of carpet. <laughs> Tim, you wanted to say something? Yes, it's, uh, you know, we, we talk... There's two parts to this story. There's the building of the ark, and then there's the afterwards of the yeah. ark. Mm -hmm. And we all get swallowed up in the building of the ark. Mm -hmm. But God's covenant with Noah, that's after the ark is done mm -hmm. and the land is, and there's land, mm -hmm. now he's going to repopulate the earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now he has a new responsibility, and that responsibility mm -hmm. is raising, creating a, a Christian a populace yes. mm -hmm. to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me a lot of. Uh, what Moses did with the people of Israel. He got them through the Red Sea, and lo and behold, everybody was thankful, and what happened? Down we went again. Yep. Yep. So, it, it's, it's quite amazing what God lays on, I would lack, for a lack of thing, a better thing to say, is mm -hmm. a very few people mm -hmm. that have the willingness, the patience, and the guts mm -hmm. to do what they do. Yes, mm -hmm. and the Bible says we are living in the time of Noah again. Mm -hmm. As it was in the days of Noah, so the world is now. The government was useless in Noah's time. They couldn't stop evil. They weren't interested in stopping evil. Mm -hmm. The government, I hate to say it, is useless in our time. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they only fulfill the wish of the voters so they can get That's the vote. Right. That's right. They're not interested in what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. and it, it's all about the vote and we are being called to stand in the gap. Yes, but I, I think in that day when, when the, 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 um, the art was built, the Bible said that be, uh, because iniquity shall abound, sin shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But you said something earlier that was profound about uh, the race is not given to the swift. You said that earlier. Yeah. Neither to the strong, neither to the swift, how fast you're going, yeah. but he that endure, yes. persists. Yes. So even after <clears throat> Noah got over there, the children of Israel fell back into sin. The Bible said their, e their thoughts was only evil continually. Mm -hmm. God brought them to safety. I mean, when another generation ra rose up. And, and that's true today. The Bible said, as it did, just what you just quoted, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. They ate, they drank, they rose up to play. Yes. Homosexuality, fullness of bread. That's what's yes. happening today. And so God allowed judgment. God sometimes, okay, you don't want to listen? All right, here we go. He allowed judgment to bring the people back to him, right? And he does that today. I believe that we, we are, we are at the Christmas of judgment. Because we ain't trying to listen to God as a people. And not, not the saints. I'm talking about those that won't listen to God. That God is going to cause the wrath of God will come upon the children of disobedience. Yeah. I, think, I think the devil... Just remember the promise that God <coughs> gave Noah that there would, the earth would not be destroyed by, um, you know, by flood again. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole world. Uh, yes. Was that beautiful rainbow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'd never seen a rainbow before? Mm -hmm. yep. And the devil's taken that rainbow to, to use for his purposes and to depict sure sin in the world. Mm -hmm. God's not mocked. No, he's not he mocked. is. His time is coming. We're just as in the days of Noah where the flood came, there's a time coming where God will remove his people mm -hmm. and the rest uh, will face him. I think though that right now we we're, we don't see a Noah within this world, 
I think that we all have to step in and be Noah's. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's true. Correct. I, I don't. I can't think of a country on earth right now, uh, or any form of government that they have, that has a leadership that is qualified that you can call them, uh, in any sense of the word, Noah-like. No. That's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Or godly. Or godly. Or god -like. Or god -like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or godly. Mm -hmm. And as Noah. His responsibility was to build that ark, but also for his family, mm -hmm. to save his family. Mm -hmm. Our responsibilities are for our families. Mm -hmm. Leading them right, and knowing that it isn't just our children, but our children's children's children mm -hmm. going on you know, in future generations, we're responsible to stand in the gap mm -hmm. and lead our kids right. Is that why no one lived? So long, 900 years <coughs> to fulfill the uh, the odyssey of mankind. There. It's possible. Uh, the, there was a lot of people did. As I said, um, it was interesting that Noah's forefathers, um, most of them lived the same time as Adam. Mm -hmm. I was reading now again. I made a mistake earlier, but Adam died about 200 years before Noah was born. Mm -hmm. That means his family, his father, his grandfather, his great grandfather, all lived in the time of Adam. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't take long for the world to go to. No. Five. Mm -hmm. Didn't. Yeah. Well, Continues from Noah on, too, right? He gets off the ark, and we're back in the garden scene with his vineyard, and yeah. he gets drunk, and yes. whatever his son does there. Yes. Speculation on exactly what it was, but. Looks on his nakedness, it says, and yes, he ends up cursed, and, and we're not going to be too far down the road. We'll have the yep. Tower of Babel going on, and the world is horrible again. Yes. And then Abram's going to pop up for us, and he has that something like what God saw in Noah. He's seeing it started Adam, and no, Adam wasn't right. Huh? That's true. Let's pick Noah. Noah wasn't right. Now we got Abram, and uh, Abram sticks through. Yeah. Has his mistakes along the way, yeah. yes. um, which I think we can see humanness in all these men that God That's has true. chosen. Mm -hmm. There are role models, yeah, our mentors. Yes. Our big thing, right? You got to look at something. Piece. We have something that they didn't have to keep, help keep us in track. And that's the Holy Spirit. Correct. So what's our excuse? And I was going to... Yeah, what's our excuse? <laughs> what's now, our excuse? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I was going to close with that. It's a good point because... I, we, the difference between us and Noah is Satan was not dis destroyed or, or beaten yet in Noah's time. Mm -hmm. He was still going strong. And with us, we've got the Holy Spirit and Satan is a defeated foe. Yes. And we can trust God exactly. that he will help us through that. So we need to close. Our time is up. <clears throat> um... Who's going to close in prayer for me? Any... I'll, I'll close. Thank you. God, God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We, as we uh, have listened to your word, we thank you, Lord God, that you're going to make us consistent. We're going to uh, press through. God, don't let us just be hearers of the word, but help us to be doers also. We thank you for the teacher and everyone that's present. Every need is already met according to your riches and glory. In, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 And I hope you have a good week. And, uh, go stand in the gap. Bonnie, you got a good gap that you stand in. I'm very blessed, though. Or we next week. Next week. See you next week, and we will carry on with the next week. I'm going to be in North Carolina.